Thank you, Sharon. Shavua Tov, everyone. Welcome to this double celebration. I see this first as a celebration of Ken's successful completion of 10 years in our midst, and secondly, as a celebration of Temple Israel's immense good fortune of having a cantor with all these wonderful qualities that Ken possesses. I don't know how we got to be so lucky, but there is one person who I think deserves a shout out at this point in having made it happen, and that is Linda Silverman, who chaired the search committee. <laughs> and persuaded the congregation to take a chance on a young man with very little of a record, but a great deal of promise. And I think we all feel very blessed that we did. When I was growing up in Brooklyn two generations ago, the job of the congregational chazan was hard but simple. He had to do one thing and do it well. He had to chant the service so that people were moved to prayer and to appreciate it. And if he did that, they would forgive him for whatever he did during the rest of the week. <laughs> the chazan at my synagogue, for example, chanted beautifully on Shabbat morning and during the rest of the week, moonlighted at the Metropolitan Opera, you may have heard of him, the name is Richard Tucker. <laughs> In the intervening generations, the job of the Chazan has changed. Instead of being hard but simple, it's hard but complicated. Today's Chazan has to do so many things well. He has, first of all, to chant the service so that those of us who come those who are familiar with the liturgy and those to whom it is strange feel moved to pray. If you can do that, that alone is a great accomplishment. But beyond that, he has to inspire the congregation to want to join in when it's appropriate and to listen actively rather than passively when they're not actively chanting. He has to train bar mitzvahs, something Richard Tucker never did. <laughs> He has to work with a choir. He has to organize, schedule, and train Torah readers and take on responsibilities at the morning minion. When I see Ken do all of these things, I have that same sense of regard that I have when I watch Tom Brady play quarterback for the Patriots. <laughs> Here is somebody doing something well that I can't do at all. <laughs> It shouldn't be too much for any one person to do well. And yet, astonishingly, Cantor Ken does. In addition to everything he does in the congregation, the minion and the bar mitzvahs and the services and everything else, he does a couple of things. Ken and Shira do things that we have no right to expect of them and can't be in their contracts. They've persuaded their parents to join the temple. <laughs> <laughs> and to come to shul virtually every Shabbat. I don't know what other candidate could have satisfied us with that. In addition, Ken and Shira have contributed three children to the local Jewish day school. And that is a wonderful thing to have done. In his spare time, Ken is an exemplary husband and father son and friend so, to so many of us. I'm left with two questions. How did we get to be so lucky? And how do we make sure that our good luck continues for many years to come? Ken, Shira, we are honored by your presence. We are uplifted by your gifts. We cherish your friendship. And we look forward to many, many more years of the same. Masa